All right. Welcome to the last lesson of Chapter 4, or Unit 4. And now we're going to do the volume of right cylinders. We've done the surface area, previous lesson, and uh, now it's time to move into the, the volume. Now, if you remember back to when we did the first volume a long time ago of a prism, a square prism, we had the 5 by 2 uh, blocks on the, on the base, and we found out that if you multiply it by the height, you've got the volume. And just like we did the cylinder, we said just like we did this, we can also work with the area of the base, and we can do the area and multiply it by the height, and that will give us our volume. So in this case, if I tell you the area of the base was 16, and the height was 10, you would go 16 by 10, and you would get 160 centimeter cubes. Now the area of the base in this particular one was a length, sorry, area is equal to length times width. It's a rectangle. Now, the only difference between this one and doing the cylinder is that the base is going to be a circle. It's like that. So if I tell you the area of the base is 16 and it's a circle, all you do is the same thing. The area of the base being 16 multiplied by 10. So the area of this, sorry, the volume of this particular um, cylinder is 160 centimeters cubed. I think I said area in the previous one with the rectangular. I was talking about the volume. So how do you find the area of the base when it's the shape of a circle? Well, we have to find the area of the base itself. So how do we find that? Well, area is equal to pi r squared. So all we need to do is to put that in here. So area is pi r squared times height. Well, let's take the height word out and put in the h, and we get pi r squared h. And that's your volume. So we can use this to calculate the volume of a particular cylinder. So I've got a cylinder here which has a radius of 10 centimeters. I've got a height of 60 centimeters and I want to know what its volume is. So we have three variables. So let's start with the first one. Pi is always 3.14. Now the radius, go up here. Radius is halfway across the circle. That's 10. Now it's squared, so it's 10 squared. And of course our height is given to us as 60. Now you'll have to use your calculator for this. That's all right. Grab your calculator and you're going to get one, sorry, 18,840 centimeter cubes. Okay, so all said and done. That's as simple as it gets. Let's go through a couple more examples just so you, you know, and then we'll actually do some more com complex ones. A resort swimming pool is shaped like a flat cylinder. It's a circle, and it's deep. The pool is 20 meters across, and it's 2 meters deep. If the pool can be filled at a rate of 0 0.4 cubic meters of water every minute, how long will it take to fill the pool in hours to the nearest tenth? So this is a fairly complicated question. In order to do this, we have to find out what the total volume is so that we can find out how much time it takes in minutes to actually fill it. So we have a big cylinder. I'll draw you a picture over here. It's a cylinder, it's a big pool, I'll draw it above ground, maybe it's an above ground pool. Alright, it is right here, it's got a depth which is 2 meters, and it's got a distance across the top which is 20 meters. Now remember, this is a diameter. That means that our radius is going to be half our diameter, so that's 10 meters. So, pi r squared h, 3.14 is our pi, radius is 10, so we're going to square that. And my height is also 10, I guess. Okay. Oh, no. Height is 2. Let's get that right. I was looking at the wrong part of the diagram. All right. So I've got 3.14, which is pi. My radius halfway across the pool. Since it's 20 across the whole way, halfway across is 10. So we square that. And, of course, my height is 2. And you'll kick all that into your calculator, and you'll get 628 cubic meters of water can go in that pool. So now to find out what comes next, you have to figure out how fast the water will go in. Well, if it takes one minute to put in 0.4, in two minutes it'll put in 0.8, we want to find out how many 0.4s will fit into 628. So we're going to take 628, we're going to divide it by 0 0.4. Now remember, we're dividing by a number less than one so we're going to actually get a number greater than 628. 
it actually works out to be 1,570 minutes. Now that's not done because it says we have to convert this into hours. So 1,570 minutes converted into hours. There's 60 minutes in every hour, so I want to find out how many 60s will fit into this. And that means I have to take 1,570 minutes and divide it by 60. When I do that, I get 26.16 repeating hours. All right. Now, it says to round it off to the nearest up here, nearest tenth. So I mean that means one decimal place. So remember this is actually 26.16666 to round it off to the nearest tenth. That's one decimal place. So there's our cutoff. Does this six cause that one to go up? Yes, it does because it is five or greater. So my answer is 26 hours and 0.2. So this is going to take a long time to fill. My advice, get another hose. Okay. A small cylinder with a radius of 5 centimeters is used to fill a large cylinder with a radius of 10 centimeters. If the small cylinder has a height of 10 centimeters and a large cylinder has a height of 20 centimeters, how many times will the small cylinder be used to fill the large cylinder? So your first job is to find the surface, sorry, the volume of both of these. So pause the recording and do it. All right. To start with, we need our formulas. Volume is equal to pi r squared. There's our circle, our area of our base, times our height. It's the same formula over here, but we have different numbers. So read carefully. The large cylinder has a height of 20, okay, and it has a radius of 10. So making sure you don't mess things up, 3.14 radius of 10 squared times the height of 20. Okay, doing the work here, volume is going to be equal to, oh, wait a minute, I will self check here, I didn't make a mistake on the radius. Uh, small cylinder, the large cylinder has a height of 20, radius of 10. Yep, just double checking to make sure my radiuses are not messed up, okay? So 3.14 times 10 squared times 20 is going to give us a number, and I don't have my calculator on me at the moment. There we are. Okay, so 3.14 times that by 10 squared, that's 10 times 10, times that by 20 means that we have 6,280 centimeter cubes. All right, so we have a fairly large, you know, bucket there. Now let's take a look at the next one. Uh, the small cylinder has a radius of 5, okay, and a small cylinder has a height of 10. So again, volume is equal to 3.14, the radius is 5 squared, and the height is going to be 10. All right, so we go 3.14, multiply that by 5 times 5, which is 25, and multiply that by 10. It means we have 785. So, we know the volume of the small cylinder right here. We know the volume of the large cylinder right there. So now the question is, how many times would I have to use a small cylinder to fill the large one? So, we have to take and take this large cylinder and find out how many of these will fit into it. So we have 6280 or 6280 divided by 785, which means it's going to take eight times. Isn't that work out well? Okay. So, that is the end of this unit. Make sure you go over everything that you need to for the unit final. There's a lot of work here. Here's your assignment. Here's the review for the unit. And here's actually a practice test at the end, too, if you wanted to work on that. If you have any questions, watch it again. When you, uh, If you have any more concerns, come and talk to me. So, I will see you at the unit final.